Hello, this is Ingrid Auer. Today I'd like to introduce you to another amazing woman. Her name is Ilof and I met her in Florida, in Sarasota at the Cryon uh, Conference this year. And when I saw her for the very first time, I thought, oh my God, she looks like a fairy with her red hair and her radiating energy. And I was really curious who she is. And therefore, I asked her for an interview, and now we are here talking to each other. And I realized that she is very into music, 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 music. Hello, Iluf. How are you? How are you? I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I realized that you are originally from Australia. How did you get to Florida? Why did you move to Florida? Okay, I was in a movie, uh, which was the sequel to Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie, Pumping Iron. Okay. Many years ago. And at the time I was into bodybuilding and powerlifting. Okay, interesting. <laughs> you know that Schwarzenegger uh, is from the same country than I am, from Austria? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's one of the big heroes of Austria. No, this is fun. <laughs> but it, there's another connection between us. It's yes. Yeah. And so you came to the US, to Florida or, or California? The first place that I came to was Las Vegas. Oh. Because filming in Las Vegas at Caesar's Palace. Okay. And was a very interesting entry into the United States because Las Vegas is not like everywhere else. <laughs> very unique. And then I moved to New York. I went to New York afterwards. I met a girl in the filming that said to me, uh, I need a roommate. Would you like to live with me? <laughs> and working for the New York Times. She was a writer. Yeah. And house. And I ended up staying with her. And then never going back to Australia. Mm -hmm. Years, eight, nine years. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very interesting story. <laughs> and then you moved from New York to Florida. Yes, that yeah. was the reason of warm weather. Ah, I can understand. This is the reason why I'm here in Mallorca and not in Austria, because it's a little bit warmer, at least here, than in Central Europe. <laughs> because Mallorca is Southern Europe and we live next to the sea, so I really uh, understand you very well. But let's come back to your passion. Did you grow up with music or how and when came music into your life? Consciously. Yes, I did grow up with music. My parents, uh, my dad was born in Egypt. My mother was half French and Greek. Mm -hmm. And my dad was half Greek and they immigrated to Australia. So their musical background and their musical life was full of French music, uh, Egyptian, Moroccan, mm -hmm. uh, Turkish music, Greek music. All this cultural influence. Mm -hmm. and I was immediately, I think from when I was born, involved with music. We had musical instruments. My mother sang. And the feeling of music resonated with me. I think when I consciously became connected with it, mm -hmm. as a teenager, it was my way of escaping emotional feelings. Okay. Mm -hmm. or dealing with emotional feelings. It mm -hmm. was my way for reaching into another world. Mm -hmm. Okay. And connecting with spirit. Yeah. So music is a kind of bridge between the physical world or the material world or the, uh, I say always program one. For me, our world is program one and the spiritual world, or this is what's beyond, is program two. So like, you build a bridge from program one to program two with music, but not only for yourself, also for your clients. How do you do this? How, how do you work with clients? Or let's, take, uh, let's talk about it a little bit. Okay, so I work with clients one on one, but mostly now in groups. And I use the crystal singing bowls 
because they have pure tones mm -hmm. and so their notes are consistent it's not like um another instrument where the notes are changing the crystal bowls have a certain note but they have many overtones mm -hmm. so when they're played together the brain actually is in training or the body is in training to the notes of what's being played so that means that we're almost like retuning ourselves and entrainment means that something that is is outside of ourselves our vibration becomes similar to that external vibration mm -hmm. so we can use this when our body is out of alignment or out of balance to come back into this balance that is very natural and easy it's mm -hmm. not like you're having to do very much it's very uh passive mm -hmm. in a in a in an effect but the effects are powerful at the same time so there's chemical changes that are going on in the brain while this is happening that brings the brain into a place where healing happens mm -hmm. so the uh the rate of the brain is in this state where relaxation and rejuvenation and healing can occur mm -hmm. so it's different than where we are where we're talking and we're in beta mm -hmm. and the brain much faster when they slow down then the body is signaled oh okay we're in relaxation mode we're not in stress mode we're not in fight and flight and we can do the work that the body does mm -hmm. efficiently in that mode yeah so when people are in constantly it's not allowing their body to be in a state of healing yeah yeah and people come at this mm -hmm. so um it's more passive also it's not passive because the soul and also the cells of our body and also the subtle bodies the aura, the chakra layers, everything is reacting to music. And I think music is really nourishing our energetic field, our subtle bodies. And this is what is very important, especially in the healing process. Yeah. So I also like that you mentioned uh, on your web page the word angel harp. What can we imagine when you say angel harp? <laughs> It's one of my favorite instruments. Um, it is a harp that is 36 strings mm -hmm. and they call it an angel harp because it sounds like angels. Mm -hmm. So it's got a angelic kind of vibration. It's very soft and gentle. Mm -hmm. And when we think about angels, a lot of times we think about lightness, gentleness nourishment nurturing this kind of gentle energy that is coming to us mm -hmm. and in a music format mm -hmm. this is this kind of energy mm -hmm. and the your music with angel harp can we hear this online on youtube on the cd how, how can we learn more about it You can go on my website, elovemusic.com, E-L-U-V, music.com. Mm -hmm. And I have videos up on YouTube and I have some music up and guided mm -hmm. meditation. Wonderful. So our listeners and our followers will check it and step into this kind of energy. So, uh, but you are also a singer. What's about your life, your healing um, music performance? I started using my voice for or as a healing modality in the very beginning when I started becoming interesting in sound healing. So for me, I had been exposed to a unit, which is a sound healing modality that people would lie on the bed. Mm -hmm. And then the bed would bring back to them sound. So it's like their vibration was coming through the bed and being outputted as sound. 
And so this machine was called the Genesis machine. And mm -hmm. while people were on the Genesis machine, I would use my voice intuitively with different notes to resonate an additional layer of sound. Mm -hmm. And what I found was there's, there's something that happens with the, when you're using the voice for the user and also listening to the human voice. It's a natural, organic instrument. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the powerful instruments that we can utilize for sound healing, both for ourselves and for somebody else, or mm -hmm. being in the presence of somebody else and using sound with intention of working with the energy field. Mm -hmm. So my intention was to work with a person's energy field um, and to be able to intuitively know which sounds to bring forth to help them balance. Mm -hmm. So I've been working with for many, 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 many years. And now I'm teaching others to use their voice also as a healing modality so that they can uh, take advantage of this when they're home in their own space and they have another tool. Mm -hmm. So these are tools for people. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> it's amazing. It might be also be a very good uh, combination between my spiritual tools, my angel symbols and essences in combination with your music, with your singing and so on. Because these are different vibrations, but they are coming together and they can create a, a new energetic field or a new information, a healing information. This opens up healing dimensions I think we have never realized before. And we don't, we, of course we know what's music. And I always say we know a little bit, but what music really can uh, open up for us, I think we are getting more and more into this um, the more we are interested and open for spirituality, the more we are also learn about the effect of music. Yeah, because I think it's very close music and spirituality. So you have another very interesting field, the ultrasound radio show. What about this? Ultrasounds I've also been doing for about 20 plus years. I started ultrasounds. I'm was working as a DJ in a radio station. And I had two radio shows. One of them was ultrasounds. And the intention behind ultrasounds is to really bring world music with positive vibrations to people. Mm -hmm. Early on, 25 years ago, world music was not that popular. So it was very new. And the introduction of the different cultural energies that come through the music and blending those is my mission to share with people so that people can understand that music is so multi-dimensional mm -hmm. it's so multifaceted and it's a language of love mm -hmm. it doesn't require a language in understanding as far as our brain you know and having to understand a particular language it is beyond that mm -hmm. So bringing this music to people, it's also opening people's hearts and connecting them to other cultures. Mm -hmm. yeah. People find their heart and their love in other cultures. Maybe they're hearing a, a song from Brazil or a song from France and becoming curious about what is this culture and how is the music so different in different countries? Yeah. So the common thing is that it, music as a whole is this universal language. And then the distinctions between each country, each country has its own vibration. So the music of each country is going to have its own vibration and can also be used as a tool. Mm -hmm. For example, if we're playing music from Africa, which is very tribal and rhythmic, it's going to be helpful to bring the energy in the body out and up in a certain way yeah if we're bringing music of uh ireland or celtic music and playing harps then it's going to bring the music in a more ethereal way mm -hmm. connect 
spirit in a, a totally different way. So you see these contrasts mm -hmm. and contrast is important when we're working with spirituality, because a lot of times people are avoiding contrast to activate only what is good. Mm -hmm. And we really need the contrast to be able to give us that inspiration to change. Yeah. If we don't have the contrast, we're not as likely to kind of step out of our shell and make that move to change. Yeah. So contrast is also important. Yeah, absolutely. We live in duality and it's important to see both sides of a coin, not only, as you say, the lovely one, but also to be confronted or to confront ourselves with the backside of the coin, because to learn about us, ourselves, to also to transform, doing transforming processes, and also, yes, maybe even releasing, um, releasing uh, karma, karmic patterns, all these things is important not to look only in the mirror and say, yes, everything is so nice. Yes, I'm a Scorpio and no, and my work, sometimes I have to dig very deep and from a client and also for myself, it's not also very comfortable, but it's really important to do this. And I think in combination with music or sound or healing, it's very, um, intensively it can be soft but it can be also be a little bit uncomfortable but getting through uh, is always a very important healing process so let's get back again to to your radio show do you speaking about music do you playing what what's in your radio show what's the focus of your radio show so the focus is two hours of music oh. mm -hmm. so it's like a, a mix of music and I usually start off a little gentle and then move up and then kind of by the end of it mm -hmm. we have some danceable music mm -hmm. so it actually goes vibrationally from soft to middle to a little bit more up tempo mm -hmm. okay so you're working with many women I'm working I find that a lot of times women are the ones that attend events, mm -hmm. um, which is not a, not a negative thing because the women are bringing back this energy to their men. Yeah. So it's okay. And then sometimes the women are bringing the men in mm -hmm. yeah. the way. Okay. Yeah. And for women, I feel like we are a little bit more courageous in the way of working with the esoteric, working with our spiritual self. Yeah. Sometimes uh, men, because of the collective conditioning to hold their emotions in a certain or to have their emotions very um, contained, mm -hmm. it's not allowing them really expand or explore and women don't seem to have that we're mm -hmm. much more open we're much more fluid we're connected with our heart energy in a different way yeah so it's it's kind of like sometimes we have to be the one to do something and make the first move mm -hmm. or maybe always we have to do that yeah because it's for ourselves yeah when I work with women, I also realize that we women are the door opener to spirituality for our family or yeah. for our partnership or for our children. Sometimes the children are the door openers because they say, I get crazy now, you know, the ADHD and all this stuff. These are also door openers to spirituality, maybe not at the first uh, sight you don't maybe realize what's going on now but sometimes you need a kick or you need something very inconvenient and then people do the next step and as you said women uh, have more courage I also think because uh, spirituality and also esoteric things are like yeah in our culture in our so-called good world 
but we have forgotten that we are spiritual beings in a human body and we are all spiritual yeah but we are not allowed to show ourselves in a spirit spiritual mode so i love what you say because it's the same experience you do with women when you're working with them and for them and it's very important also i think to come together even if you come together only in the internet uh, like now but to bring our energies together to create a very strong but very loving energy field a female feminine field this is for me part of our big big healing process which is going around the world and this is also the reason why i'm traveling in different countries working with women and this is the reason why we met each other and i really <laughs> hope that we will stay in connection and we'll meet each other one day in person again so i'd like to invite you if you have any last um how do you say import sentence or um, a short message for our listener what would it be what would you like to share with us okay so one thing that i recognized when you were speaking about women being kind of like the entryway is that the woman is the one that carries the baby mm. the woman holds the space for growth in such a way yeah. that is so extraordinary and so magnificent and so amazing and for women to really know that this is a possibility with their spirituality as well so not only can we bring a child into this earth but we can bring that level of extraordinary miracle in terms of spiritual growth and expansion and sharing this love with others mm -hmm. we have this amazing capacity to do this with each other and it's really a time to support each other in a new way before people were less connected to their own spirituality now people are tapping in they're getting turned on and there's a feeling of this community that has been expanded and it's like been accumulating over a while so to go into this feeling of being connected with other women being connected with yourself and going beyond feelings of uh, jealousy or feeling threatened by other women all these lower energies mm -hmm. are on the way out yeah. they don't serve to yeah. hold that energy and so it, it's really coming into a place where we can support each other with this confidence this inner confidence that we have from ourselves so it it, it is uh clearing a lot of these lower energies because we can come to our sisters and see who they are mm -hmm. by seeing who we are and being in our goddess energy being in our healing space being in our comfort of being grounded in that thank you so much there's nothing more to add because everything you expressed could also come from my heart. So thank you so much. And I really love to meet you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>